Welcome to Dulwich Picture Gallery, or should I say, the parish church of Santa Maria la Blanca in Seville. This exhibition focuses on the relationship between the great painter Murillo, who worked pretty much all his life in Seville, and the canon of the cathedral, Justino de Neve. Together, they embarked on many commissions in Seville, decorating churches, the cathedral, and even a hospital that looked after retired priests. But what is so amazing about this show is the fact that Murillo, with this patronage behind him, was able to completely unleash himself and paint these massive lunettes for churches using his incredible technique, his style, which was very loose, full of colours, but also able to design compositions that work well in the space. And this is the reason why we've decided to hang these pictures at height, so that you can see them from below upwards and appreciate the perspective but also the way he composes his, his pictures so that they reflect the architecture around him. Come and meet the man himself. We've been very fortunate to borrow this from the National Gallery, the self-portrait by Murillo, which shows him um, in his uh, early 60s. At the height of his career, he has the total confidence of showing himself not only within the frame of the picture, but within a, a fictive frame inside, and his hand breaks that space and laid out on the shelf are his palette and a drawing with a chalk holder. And the inscription below reads, I made this painting to fulfill the wishes of my own children. So basically, he's dedicated this great self-portrait to his own children. Indeed, he had had nine children, sadly five dies, died very early on, but his four other children were very much present in his life. He himself was the youngest of 14 children, and as you'll see throughout the exhibition, Murillo is probably one of the greatest painter of children. There are fantastic portraits of, of the Christ child, the infant St. John, among others. Murillo painted this portrait of Justina when Justina was 40 years old. And actually the inscription says, I painted this with the intention of giving it to Justino. And it's um, a perfect testament of their relationship. Uh, Justina was the executor of Murillo's will. It shows the canon of the cathedral sitting there. We've interrupted him. Um, you can see that he's holding a little booklet. Uh, his finger is in there, saving the page. Behind him is this beautiful Augsburg clock that he collected. Um, and we know in the inventory of his collection that Justina owned 18 paintings by Murillo. And a tiny miniature that we've been able to uh, borrow, it's a complete rediscovery by Murillo that shows the, the dream of St. Joseph. So all in all, Justina not, was not only a patron of Murillo's art for his private apartments, but he also then launched Murillo on the public sphere and made sure that he painted some of his greatest works, and as we will see with other altarpieces. In Justino's collection was a painting listed as the Allegory of Spring. And it's been suggested that the flower girl here from Dulwich is actually that picture because of the flowers that she holds are a personification of her attributes as spring. What's been really exciting is that we managed to do an X-ray of this painting and underneath it is the bottom half of a virgin immaculate conception. And that immaculate conception we recognise as being won by Murillo and datable to 1665. And the reason I say this is because it gives us a clue to when this picture was painted, basically post-1665. And for a long time, we've wondered who would have sat for Murillo as the flower girl. And there's something very natural, very intimate in the way he depicts this young girl looking out at you in a very innocent manner. And I would like to think that it is actually Murillo's daughter, Francisca. And I say that because we know he had a daughter. She was around 15, 14 uh, when this picture would have been painted. So it's the right kind of age for her. But what's most fascinating is the fact that she joined the D Dominican order. She became a nun of, of two years later. And she took on the name of Santa Rosa of Lima, St. Rose of Lima. And one wonders whether these roses are an illusion to what her future life as, as a nun. The fascinating thing is that Justino de Neves' niece and sister were part of that same convent. And one wonders that whether the friendship was not only one of patron and painter, but also of family, and whether they shared the similar interest in sending their most loved ones into local convents. Justino 
as a canon, also was quite wealthy in his own right and therefore was able to afford the great paintings by Murillo. And you have to remember that Murillo was at the height of his career and a very desirable artist in the 1660s in Seville. And so for the cathedral, Rossino commissioned Murillo this amazing painting of the baptism. Rossino wanted to redecorate the baptistry at the cathedral, and so he asked Murillo to paint this very large canvas so that it could go right up high on the high altarpiece, which means that normally you can't see it at all, and not only that, but it was covered with soot and old varnishes. And so for the exhibition, we cleaned it especially, and for the first time, you could actually see it properly. And it's full of beautiful passages of paint, particularly the flesh tones of Christ, um, the way his purity of the skin, he, he hasn't been in the sun too much. When you contrast it with St. John, St. John the Baptist, uh, as he pours the water on him. But there's also some wonderful passages of paint, particularly in the water, the way you can see the feet of Christ, one leg in the water, the transparency of the water, beautifully captured with the other, the heel, um, with wonderful highlights around it. You'll see throughout the show that Murillo is a great painter in terms of controlling the brushwork, but also controlling the kind of pigments that allow to simulate reality. Justino de Neve was also very committed to charitable acts and with some fellow priests decided to set up a hospital that would look after retired priests. And for the refectory of this place, uh, Murillo was commissioned to paint this uh, quite wonderful painting of the virgin and, virgin and child handing out bits of bread to these retired priests who you see down in the lower right-hand corner. And this is a typical Murillo where he uses realism for the portrait and then a different kind of style, a bit slightly more idealised for the virgin and child to represent a, a religious sacred scene. Uh, but it's him at his best in terms of adapting to the patron's wishes, but also bringing in a sheer beauty of style and, and pictorial uh, composition. So as the main altarpiece here at Dulwich, um, really sort of the jewel of the crown, is Murillo's most famous painting, The Immaculate Conception. Uh, this is a picture that uh, was um, originally in, in the hospital church, um, and unfortunately it was taken by Marshal Soult, the infamous general of, of Napoleon's, in 1810, back to Paris. It was literally stolen until it was eventually given back to the Spanish state in 1940 when Franco and Pétain came to an agreement. And what's been very exciting about having the picture here is that we've been able to reunite it for the first time with the rather magnificent altar frame that is still in the church. Of course, General Soult could not take the frame as well. So it's been a great moment to reunite these two. But what is fascinating is that the frame actually has carved on the side all the symbols of the Immaculate Conception, such as the tower, the, the well, the cypress tree, all taken from the songs of songs that allude to her purity and virginity. Uh, but it means that Murillo is able to take away the symbols that normally have to be included in the composition to create this wonderful sweeping composition of the Virgin being assumed into heaven, surrounded by a myriad of, of, of cherubims, lifting her up. It's a picture that is meant to completely elate you. It's, it is the kind of Murillo that may put people off. There's no doubt about it that it's very chocolately boxed, that it's very decorative, very sentimental. But when you come and see this picture, you'll see how the style, the, the composition, the light, the flesh tones, the study of the, each child, they're all different, is done with such love and such genuinity that it means that the composition really takes off. And this is what made Murillo incredibly famous back home in Seville. Being able to mount this exhibition on Murillo and Justino de Neve has given us a great opportunity here at Dulwich to re-examine the Murillos that we um, actually have. Uh, when this gallery opened in 1811, we were proud to be able to show off 13 Murillos. Now, of course, with time and art historians coming here and looking at the works, quite a few of them have been demoted. Nevertheless, we have uh, four of the greatest masterpieces uh, by Murillo, The Flower Girl, The Virgin of the Rosary, and these two beggar boy pictures that have been cleaned and restored specially for the exhibition, thanks to a special grant from the Bank of America. And 
what's happened is a, a, a pretty much a transformation. We've removed old varnishes, uh, retouchings, we've relined the pictures to basically um, bring back uh, a sense of space, of clarity of composition, and also of texture throughout, and particularly details such as the feet, the f uh, facial features, have all been brought back in real volumes. And so the pictures suddenly really speak out as they never really did before. Uh, but these paint pictures were painted by Murillo for pretty much his own, in his spare time, for a very specific clientele, not the church people that he normally worked for, but for Flemish merchants. And a lot of these pictures found their way into Antwerp in Murillo's lifetime. And actually these two pictures are recorded in London as early as 1690, before they were bought in 1804 by the founder of this gallery, Deux Enfants. What particularly attracted um, painters, collectors to Murillo was his portraits of children. And indeed, in The Beggar Boys, he may have used his own children to pose as, as poor street children. Um, but the painter that was particularly excited by Murillo's beggar pictures was Gainsborough, who actually collected Murillo. He owned three, three pictures by him. And his response is this fantastic picture of the cottage girl that we've been very lucky to borrow from the National Gallery of Ireland. And it shows a young girl holding a ceramic pitcher, holding a dog, looking rather sort of sad but innocent, um, standing in landscape. And if you compare this with the Murillo's, you'll see what he takes from Murillo, not only the posture, the expression, but the whole setting. And Reynolds, uh, who saw these pictures and said they're absolutely marvellous, called them fancy pictures, mainly because they weren't portraits nor landscape, they were a new genre in itself, but they owed everything to Murillo. So what we did while we organised this exhibition was to go through the storage here at Dulwich and pick out all the pictures that had been bought as by Murillo. And among them are pictures that really are, have nothing to do with him, are just mere imitations by later followers. But among them were these three pictures here, and particularly this one here, that we managed to clean in order to understand them better. And I'm very happy to say that um, this one is very likely to be by Muriel himself, and is indeed a very rare oil sketch by the artist himself. We knew he did drawings, and we do know he did sketches, but very few survived. And before we cleaned this, uh, this was full of um, varnishes and repaints, but a lot of the figures had been reinforced to make it look like a, a finished painting. And in removing this, what was revealed was this incredibly sketchy um, technique in order to try and capture a scene, which is the nat nativity, the kings have appeared, they're kneeling before the Christ child, the virgin is still wanting to hold on to the baby, but is ready to offer the baby to, to the kings for them to, to recognise him as the king of kings. And what's fascinating is that this, this sketch actually relates to a well-known painting uh, by Murillo of the same subject in Toledo, Ohio, in America. And the final picture actually reverses exactly this composition to the other side. And instead of having the Virgin sitting, looking rather meek and, and sentimental, she's standing, offering the baby in an almost cold manner. So you can see how Marilia starts off with something that's very human and then turns it into something that's much more formal and sacred in a way, because it has to follow the narrative story of Jesus' life.